Hi, how's it going? My name is Bjorn and today we're going to make this lampshade. Let's get going. Ok, so we're in Fusion now. And as you saw, this lamp or lampshade is gonna be made out of 3 pieces of 10mm plexiglass. Each piece is basically gonna have 72 holes in it, so I can thread it with paracord. And I already have a design in front of me with a couple of dimensions I think I'm gonna use, so let's just draw it up. Let's make a new component. And make a circle that's gonna be 28 millimeters. And this is the same size as the lamp filling. And then we're gonna make another circle that's gonna be 54 millimeters. Okay, so now we're gonna make two rows of 36 holes. One of the rows is gonna be offsetted a half a hole. Let me show you. So let's make a helpline from the center down. We can make this a construction line. Now make another line from the bottom. It's gonna be 2.5 millimeters. Now we can make the hole, which is also gonna be 2.5 millimeters. And we can make a new line. And this line is gonna be offsetted. So if you take 360 degrees divided by 36 holes, you get 10, and divide that by 2, you get 5. So this is gonna be 85 degrees. We can make a new line. And this next hole center is gonna be five millimeters in. And then we're also gonna make a start and finish hole. And its center is gonna be 7.5 millimeters in. Now we can extrude this out 10 millimeters. Now we can select the two bottom holes, go up to create pattern, select circular pattern. We have the two holes selected, now we can select axis and enter 36 quantities. So there we have the first 72 holes in the top part and as you can see the top row is half a hole offset. And now we do the same with the start hole, create pattern, circle pattern, select axis. We want two, but we're gonna change the type to angle. So it's gonna be 360 degrees divided by 36 holes. There we have it. That's the first part complete. Let's make a new component for a second one. Create a circle. And it's gonna be 59. And 69. We can make a little helpline that's gonna be 2.5 millimeters in. And the hole is gonna be 2.5 millimeters as well. And now we can extrude this up. Select the hole, pattern. Select the axis, enter 72 this time. So, there we have it. And then we repeat the same thing with a new component circle. And this is gonna be 74. New circle, make it 90. And in this last part, we're gonna have two rows again. But this time there are not going to be any offsets. So let's make a helpline. 2.5. 
and then we're gonna have another helpline. It's gonna be three millimeters. We can make these constructions. Five, two point, two point five, and two point five, and extrude this up. Then select both holes, create pattern, circle pattern, select axis, thirty six holes, enter. So, there we have it. Pretty simple to do. So, let's head over to the cam side and see how we can mill this out. Okay, so we're in the cam. I'm gonna select a new setup. Gonna change the stock to 0mm offsets. And I'm also gonna change the stock point to this little corner. That's just how I prefer to do it. Okay. And the first thing we're gonna do is a drill operation. So selecting drilling. And I have made a tool we're gonna use. It's a flat two millimeter end mill. So we're gonna use a spindle speed of 10,000 RPM. And all the feed rates is gonna be 700 millimeters per minute, except for the plunging, that's gonna be 500 millimeter per minute. Then we're gonna select the hole, and one it doesn't really matter. And I will select the same diameters, which is gonna select all holes, which is convenient. Change the cycle to, you can either do a boring milling or a circle or pocket milling, as I'm gonna do. And this will plunge down 2 millimeters, And then you're gonna mill out a hole that's 2.5 millimeters in diameter. And the step over is fine. So, okay. And then we can simulate this, see what it looks like. That looks good. So the next thing to do is a contour. And I'm still gonna use the same end mill. So we can select all the contours we want. And then we add some tabs. I usually want to add a point so I can place them wherever I want. That's about right. Next thing is to change some settings. We want multiple depths. So we're gonna step down in two millimeters. We're also going to use stock to leave because we're going to make a finish pass later on. So I'm going to leave a radial stock of 0.1 millimeters. And then we're also going to deselect the lead in and lead out. The distance between the parts are only 2.5 millimeters, so it's easier to just plunge it down when the end mill is 2 millimeters. I think that's about it. Let's simulate it, see what it looks like. Okay, so it looks good, but I don't want it to jump between the different cuts. So we're gonna change that, cancel, go back and edit. And I think if I deselect order by islands, it will fix that. Okay, do another simulation.
that looks much better. So the last thing we're gonna do is duplicate this contour pass and just go in and edit it and we can change disable multi pass or multi depths and also disable stock to leave. So this is gonna be our finish patch, it's gonna go all the way down directly and just one pass around. So we should have a very nice surface after that. Let's simulate it, see what it looks like. So it goes all the way down, just one pass. It looks good. So if we select the whole setup file, click simulate, we can see that this can take us 25 minutes to do. Not bad, so let's head over to the mill and mill this out. All pieces came out with a nice and smooth finish, however I want it to be a clear finish so I started out by wet sanding from 800 grit up to 2000 grit. And then finished them off with some polish, which turned out really good. I also made a quick little jig in MDF off camera to make the next step a little bit easier. I then threaded the paracord through all the holes in a pattern that I thought would look nice. And then finally I mounted a lampshade and a 0.5 watt LED bulb and this is the final result. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.